Hello, everybody. Um, nice to see loads of familiar faces, loads of faces from Zoom as well. Um, I've written some notes because I can't remember anything. Uh, so I'm reminding myself who I am, and you guys will know too. So, right, so I'm Stella Cunningham, and I'm a textile artist. And I've been running creative workshops for nearly 40 years. And around 20 years ago, I took some training um, with an organization called Resonate to work with people that we mentioned. Basically, it was just going to be another string to my well, it was just going to be a gig. But then I really fell in love with it. I felt I really fell in love into working with people in potential. And a few years after I started doing that, it was like I was being prepared as my mum then was given a diagnosis of some body dementia. And so I get the thing with the things of searching for. She, she would get up at night and say the police were calling her, she needed to get out. And I was ha I'd be having this ridiculous argument with her because she couldn't hear. And I'll say, how can you hear the people outside when you can't hear me telling you there are no people outside? <laughs> it was madness. But anyway, so she lived with me for ages. She died a couple of years ago. Um, and during that time, I was also a social care for three years of Cam in Camden. Um, so between 2022 and 2023, I run the Dementia Programme at the Museum of London, and my predecessor is there, Amy. He would just met for the first time as well. Um, so I was running the Dementia Programme and running the network of venues who were pledging under the, the Mayor's Dementia Friendly Venues Startup <laughs> to be dementia friendly. Um, that gig is, is over, and I'm now working with the GLA, and we are, um, I'm creating a framework, pilot assessment framework for them, um, and hence the, the mystery shoppers. I'm doing this work now, trying to finish this uh, assessment framework, and that ends tomorrow. I have no job. She's got, oh, it's got a job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it ends tomorrow. So over the summer, I had three different projects and one was with the line and one was with q and the other was with arts for dementia and they all said they wanted the thing to be nature which is amazing really easy way to do it and so ben and i talked about um our gig which is going to be 10 weeks with a um daycare center and doing it about nature and we did the first three sessions in their center and quickly had to change everything. It was like, this is not gonna happen the way we thought it was. And Ben is extraordinary. He, he's dynamic and he's pushy. And he must be the bane of their life in there, but he gets things done. It was amazing. So he'll tell you how it went from what we thought and then what actually happened. And it was like someone was saying you before that, yeah, you've got to keep shifting and changing and getting used to the fact that maybe this isn't gonna happen the way you want it to. Yes, now you can talk. Sorry, thank you. Um, so I'm Ben White, and I am the Discovery and Access Learning Coordinator at Kew Gardens, which means that I am responsible for coordinating the learning and access programme for disabled people and people with long-term physical and mental health conditions. So that means that dementia programming at Kew falls to me, unfortunately, for every in the um, I we're part of the Community and Access Learning team at Kew, um, and my background is a bit of a roundabout way of coming to this because my background is as a research plant scientist um, because prior to working to Q, I was doing a PhD in plant sciences and I've now come over to the dark side of community engagement. Um, like many people in this room, as Sarah was touched on, we both have a personal connection to people living with dementia as well as our professional connection. For Sarah, as you mentioned, that's your mum. And for me, that over there in the middle is my granddad, Bob, Nobby to friends, and I, genuinely believe this man is the biggest reason why I am passionate about nature and the outdoors. I spent a huge amount of time growing up with him and my sister out and about outdoors, in the woods, um, doing all sorts of different activities. He now has um, vascular dementia and Alzheimer's. He might not be able to tell you the day of the month, uh, the month or the, who the Prime Minister is, but he can still tell you the best ways to make a bow and arrow and slingshot and the best places to find all sorts of outdoor activities. So for that, that reason, he was a big inspiration for me within this project as well. For those of you that might not know, Kew Gardens is a 330 acre botanic gardens in West London. 
We are a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and if you count just the number of species, uh, we are technically the most biologically diverse place on the entire planet. Um, I'm trying to one-up Kim now with being humble. Uh <laughs> Uh, the key's official mission is to understand and protect plants and fungi for the welfare of people and planet. Um, and the people element is where my team comes in, which is the community and access learning team at Q. And our mission is really to provide opportunities to engage with underserved audiences who might not normally be represented in Q's uh, visitor demographics. We do this um, through a range of different activities. Um, and we aim to try and inspire people to value plants, value nature, and understand what they can do to protect them. But I would believe the biggest mandate of our team is to enhance participant well-being. Ultimately, that is our main goal, um, and that's the thing that we care about most in our activities. We do a range of different things, as well as running a community access scheme. And last year, we worked with over 20,000 participants um, at Keating. My program, as I mentioned, is the Discovery and Access program, which includes our previous dementia-friendly activities, which in this case are our three monthly dementia-friendly health walks, uh, which have been running since 2015 now, as well as running outreach for local community groups, bespoke tours for groups uh, like care homes, day centers. And previously, we used to have a bus that we would take groups like care homes and day centers around the gardens in. Um, but a lot of this engagement is primarily shorter term and lighter touch. So we were engaging with lots of people, but often for smaller periods of time. So when the opportunity came to work with Enliven, we wanted to try something a little bit different. Our read guide data collected from the gardens in 2022 showed that we were failing to reach diverse communities and diverse audiences at gardens. Um, the data showed that our Vista pool was about 91% white, which uh, falls well below uh, diversity in our local borough and of course London as a whole. This was also represented in um, our programming. Sophie also mentioned earlier that uh, there is often uh, a, a, a worse sort of care uh, for uh, people from diverse communities. They're, they're less likely to get a diagnosis and they're less likely to receive adequate healthcare following on from that. And this is something that we were very aware of. So taking this alongside the idea that we wanted to do something a bit longer term and with a bit more in-depth engagement, uh, we took inspiration from Q's international collections and decided we wanted to do a reminiscence project. Q has plants from all over the world, literally almost every country, uh, and was a truly international collection of plants. Historically as well, it's, uh, Q was an institute of colonialism and it's part of addressing our history as well. Um, to explore how we can um, close gaps in um, loss of diversity around the world. So this is our, our idea, was to work for a reminiscence project. The idea being that we would be able to connect people for, who had immigrated to the UK back with plants and with nature that they might have grown up with, that they might not be able to see elsewhere. For me, it was very important that we recruit a facilitator who was more representative of the backgrounds we were trying to work with. Um, so we put out a call uh, and we ended up with the fantastic Sower. Um, and I'm very glad we did um, um, because she was brilliant. Um, and additionally, we trained uh, several volunteers to take part in our program. We were able to recruit seven new volunteers and two came over from our existing dementia friendly programming as well to help support these activities. Uh, the volunteers came from a uh, range of different backgrounds and a range of different levels of experience when interacting with people living with dementia, ranging from family carers to people who had never really had any continued interaction with people living with dementia. We ran a, a training day, which was brilliant. Um, I got people up to speed with uh, dementia-friendly awareness, as well as some uh, tips and tricks about communicating with people with dementia, as well as an understanding of how to do reminiscence to our point. We contacted several local community organizations directly to try and find partners to work with through this. And we eventually met with Nubian Life Resource Center, who is a day center in Shepherd's Bush, supporting people uh, living with dementia from African and Caribbean backgrounds. They were, reticent is the wrong word, but the Greek leaders were a little bit concerned that a visit to Q would be too much, uh, that coming to Q would be too difficult due to the mobility impairments of the group, that they would find it too overwhelming. 
So eventually we agreed to run three sessions initially at their day center to understand their group's needs, to understand their interests, and hopefully build up a bit of a trust relationship. The original plan was to use a more traditional life story model. So for those of you that aren't familiar, it kind of takes different stages of people's lives from childhood to adolescence, to work, to growing up to the present day. And we hoped to connect plants and nature to people's lives that way. And we also plan to do lots of lovely creative activities as well through this. That was the plan. And I can hand over to someone else to talk about what actually happened. Right, so the plan was, I'm black, you guys are black. You probably come from very similar climates, countries. <laughs> the foods, things you do with foods, the things you do with um, parts of foods like coconut husks and plantain, um, the, the middle supply, all that, that's gonna work. It's gonna be amazing. Um, not so. I got around this room, mm -hmm. royally told off by one lady who couldn't understand why I wanted to know her name. She completely screamed at me. And there was an interesting dynamic in the, in the group where we can see that these reminiscences weren't going to come out. And the idea had been, like Ben said, we'll go into different stages. This was not going to happen because nobody wanted to say anything. So we started them off with, um, I introduced him to Matisse, the artist, and talked about his later stages when he was not so well and he couldn't go out, he was, he was in a wheelchair and talked about the period when he was doing all his cutouts. He called it drawing with chisels. And the whole fact that he would do these and part plaster a whole room with them. And he said because he couldn't go out, he was bringing the inside, the outside in. So I told them this to get them into the idea that you don't have to be able to draw, you don't have to be able to paint, you don't have to put those massive barriers up before you even start it. There are lots of different ways to do it. So we were drawing on leaves, drawing round these things all this time trying to think, how can we get the reminiscence back? Didn't happen. So. We had a bit of a change of plan. <laughs> so, <laughs> we went back to our original point of inspiration, which was Q's very diverse and very international collections. Um, the idea now was to theme each session around a different collection at Q. We would prioritize visiting them wherever possible. And when we couldn't do that, we arranged for various different teams at Q to bring the collections to us in our um, event space, which is the Davis Exploration House here, which is quite a lovely place to do activities. Um, we let more into the creative side of things because we found that participants seemed to respond better to this aspect. And this is where having lots and lots of volunteers supporting us came in really helpful. What this meant is that through the activities, volunteers could be one-to-one -one or even one-to-two um, with participants taking part. And the reminiscence would come up more through one-to-one -one conversations, through sort of more natural conversations that way. At the end of each session, we'd have about a half an hour to 40 minute debrief with all of the volunteers. Um, and we would collect the stories that were shared by participants um as well as feedback from the participants so we were able to respond sort of as we went through each sessions so so we can now talk to you about what we actually got up to did we actually get up to it <laughs> so, um right so we did tell them about the lady who um at the center had yelled at me for asking her name and refusing to tell me first came to the first session at q walked in the door smiled, said to no one in particular, just the entire room, my name's Marcella. And this is the same woman who had dared, so well, how dare you ask me for a name? And as soon as they walked in, we saw the difference in them. They were all smiling and that's no word of a lie. They were smiling, they loved it. They thought it was amazing. So they were already in a different space in their heads. They were more willing to do things. More, they were more keen, they were less reticent, they just really, really dove into it. So this, um, oh, oh, you got to do this. Yeah, so the first session was the Tempera House. So we took them around the Tempera House, which is our largest glass house. Um, I ran a tour of the glass house before uh, participants went back to say were to get a chance to make uh, these postcards inspired by the Rainbow Eucalyptus. And we've got some quotes as well that we've collected throughout. This was personally one of my uh, favorites, which is from George. <laughs> 
which is when I die, I want to be buried there. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay. George was George was amazing, and the interesting to note about him is we ended up we did a final session, the very last one, at the end where we, we got a box together with all the different things they'd done. Glenn arranged with a box we printed about the whole project, and George, who had loved it and had really been keen to do so much didn't join us because he was back at the center and this is where him and the blokes played checkers so we lost it again it's it's just incredible what 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 you did a different timing mm. so session two we were lucky enough to have um several different trees from the caribbean brought to our glass house um so we were able to show participants fully grown versions of the trees that uh, they might have grown up with. Um, and then we ultimately made these really lovely clay models of um, the various different fruit. This was a great session because it, uh, lots of uh, people shared advice about growing the fruit back in the Caribbean, tips and tricks for how to cook them properly. Um, so it's really kind of a two way street for us. And we were learning a lot from the participants as well. We also were able to celebrate Winifred here. It was her 97th birthday, so we had cake with her and lots of singing as well. She told everybody all day. <laughs> <laughs> and just a few more photos of the tree. The third session was for, uh, with our economic botany team. So we also, as well as having live living plants, we have a collection of artifacts that show historical and contemporary uses of plants. This is our economic botany collection. And the team behind that were able to bring specimens of indigo, for example, um, as well as plants, examples of it in the glass house. Um, again, it was quite an interesting session because the growth of indigo has a long history in Jamaica. So people were able to uh, talk about sort of experiences of their parents maybe growing it, as well as one-to-one uh, -one discussions about who gets to decide which plants are growing where and how agriculture is done in different countries. Uh, the participants got to make these fantastic uh, tie-dye um, fabrics and they made a range of things from bags to shirts to silk, uh, silk blouses to these are all kind of tiles as well, which are fantastic. Um, this as well was another highlight for, for the project. This plant, this leaf is from a plant called the Leaf of Life, um, which one of the participants had spoken about in the previous session and remembered to bring to show me and then was teaching me about how to grow this plant. It's quite amazing. You can grow an entire plant just from the leaf. Um, but for me, it was very touching that she had remembers to bring that in and teach me something about it. Can't take one to cue that. Yeah, it was quite <laughs> gutted when I had to tell her that because of she's biosecurity, we had to get rid of it. Uh, we weren't allowed. <laughs> um, so yeah, she, under she understood, but it was, that was the low point of the session. <laughs> A few more fantastic photos. Is that George? Yeah, in session four's got a gallery. Um, George loved George really loved the Indigo dying because he made himself um, a shirt and wrote his name on it. He was so pleased with it. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, what else were we doing there? Oh, we, we visited some of the, there's two galleries at Kew. That was the Marriott North Gallery. Marion North was, um, she, she traveled all over the world, world doing um, photographs and photographs, paintings. Of plants so we based this particular session on her we went into the gallery which they really enjoyed and which was interesting as well because we ben and i experienced very different things happening where the people that you were talking with were very engaged and you know wanting to do like asking lots of questions and i had someone asking me the same question all the time was, was it a lady with that don't we good good for help several times throughout the, how long were we there? Oh, oh, yeah, about now. Yeah. But it was, it's just the differences in behavior. And I felt almost like, because we were in, enclosed again, she'd lost some of that vitality she had. I don't know whether she mm. thought we weren't going to go back to the room or go back to the gardens. It was just really interesting, her reaction. Uh, session five, we had a range of different succulents and cacti and participants were able to make these really cute little models. Um, as well as trying a range of different edible fruits uh, that come from cacti, including dragon fruit. Yeah. So we, when we could, we tried to make it sensory, smell and taste as well, just really good. 
So the final session at Q, we went to see All the Flowers Are For Me, which was an exhibition in one of our galleries before participants um, got a chance to make these light boxes. And for me, another highlight was one participant who didn't speak very often, while I was pushing the wheelchair she was using, she kept humming the words to it as she kept humming a hymn, but substituting the words, <laughs> cute gardens. And for me, <laughs> that was great because even though she wasn't expressing that much in terms of verbally, in terms of verbal communication, she was able to show she was enjoying that she was being here and able to show that she remembered where she was. So it was a real benefit for me. The final session was back at the day center and everybody ended up with a fantastic memory box of all of the artwork they had made at Q, some chocolate from us, a little postcard, um, and a copy of uh, a memory book of all of the photos that we had taken throughout the time at Q. So everybody got to decorate it, and the idea being they can take that home, and that's a link back to their time at Q that they can share with friends, family members, and support workers. So what did we learn? Um, really, for me, this was beneficial in showing the real power of our collections. Q, and much like every single um, one of our venues, means lots of different things to lots of different people. Um, and the range of different responses we've had was real testament to that. We were able to prove that we, have, uh, we were able to adapt when working with underrepresented audiences and the challenges that that posed. Um, and we were able to change our way of thinking in order to meet the group's needs. Um, it showed the impact of creating a space for specific communities. Um, and it gave us the confidence to show that we can actually do this sort of more long-term engagement with the same group over a longer period of time. Another massive benefit is that we've had a massive amount of internal support from this project, uh, more so than anything else that my team's done at Q before. We've had no several people asking if they can volunteer with us uh, in the future going forward, and it's really helped to highlight the need for dementia-friendly activities at Q. We've also been able to incorporate this learning into a lot of other, our other activities. <coughs> Going forward, we plan to continue doing this next year. We will hope to uh, run the programme again next year with a different group. And we'd like to try opening the group up to more individual participants. Working with a preset group was fantastic, but it definitely came with challenges and um, differences in the group dynamic that we had to navigate. Going to talk to Kim. Mm. Um, I was one of the Kim's Central Palace twisting takers for Q Palace and and to Paul Pallison and they sort of come to come to you for your model of how you got people engaged. So yeah, essentially trial it working with more individuals. Um, and our hope this year is to use even more of the gardens um, and give participants more of a choice in what they would like to do at Key. We also will be continuing our regular dementia friendly health walks um, and we are currently fundraising to get an electric minibus to support these activities to allow uh, participants with mobility impairments to access more of Key. We also hope to continue to push to make you as dementia friendly as possible. So thank you everybody for listening. Um, thank you very much to the Enliven Project for making this possible. And admit, we might overrun slightly, so I don't know if we've got time for questions, but... <laughs> questions, please.